Well, good evening, saints of God. Those of you looking at this broadcast from around the world, I want to bless you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Joel Fraser, the Kingdom Reformation Movement. And we take this opportunity on this very special occasion of Mother's Day to wish all of our mothers a very happy and holy Mother's Day. We pray that God will continue to be a source of blessing and encouragement to you, especially on this special day. And you know, we just thank God for all that He's doing in and through our midst. Amen. And so today we welcome you to the upper room. And today we will be discussing a very interesting topic, a very eye-opening topic. Uh, and the subject is things are not what they seem. Things are not what they seem. And having lost several important territories to Israel during the famous Six-Day War of 1967. An Arab confederacy of nations uh, regrouped and launched a surprise attack at Israel on the 6th of October, 1973. And to assure themselves of victory on this occasion, uh, to avoid any possibility of another embarrassing defeat, uh, their attack came like a thief in the night, and it came on Yom Kippur. Now, Yom Kippur is the holiest day within the Jewish calendar. It's actually the day where they celebrate the Day of Atonement. And so, from an Arab perspective, it was the best time to make this attack against Israel because most of their soldiers were away from their battle positions as they were celebrating the Day of Atonement. Additionally, uh, this combined uh, confederacy of nations actually outmanned and outgunned Israel by three to one. So things did not look good at all for Israel on that day. Uh, in fact, they are actually appear to be sitting ducks and, and they actually sustained very heavy losses early into the campaign as the enemy troops surged into the uh, 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 Sinai Peninsula and the Golan Heights. But how many of you know that things are not what they seem? And some of you may be looking at the program even now and you may be in a similar situation. You may feel that your enemy is gaining ground on you. They have actually surrounded you. You may feel like a sitting duck. But I want to say to you, that things are not what they seem. Having been there myself and having experienced what that feels like, I can say firsthand that when God is on your side, no matter how bad things may look in the natural, things are not what they seem. You see, although it may appear that you are about to go under, Things are not what they seem. And this is exactly how it turned out in the case of this Yom Kippur War. As the Arabs continued to make their advance into, into the Israeli territories, there was a dramatic shift and there was a dramatic change of events in which Israel counterattacked and steadily gained the upper hand. And Although the Israelis were outnumbered and outmanned, as if by divine intervention, they went on to decimate their enemies. In fact, the situation was so dire that the UN actually had to intervene and broker a, a ceasefire. And so after 19 days of, of, from the time when this war started, Israel pulled off another stunning defeat and literally routed their enemies. And this is exactly what we will encounter in our text today um, in 2 Kings chapter 6. Um, 
almost 3,000 years ago, here we see Israel again in, in a similar situation. They were in a battle. Uh, this time, the instigator of the battle was the king of Syria, and he was using every opportunity to make war and to, you know, attack the Israelites. And what he didn't know is that Israel was able to tap into a divine intelligence system, and so they were able to be ahead of his every move. And so every move that the, the king of Syria made, he was frustrated and it ended up in failure. And so he was really bothered about this and he actually thought that there was a traitor in his camp. But then one of his, his men, one of his soldiers said to him, uh, King, it's not that we have any traitors here, but there's a prophet in Israel who he's not just aware of your war strategies, but he actually knows the things that you discuss in the privacy of your bedroom. And so the king shifted his focus from warring and attacking Israel to attacking the house of the man of God. And sometimes when the enemy recognizes how serious a threat that you are to his kingdom, he will shift his attacks to your house. This is exactly what he did against Elisha. And he sent his entire army to surround the house of Elisha. And when Elisha's servant got up the next day and he saw, he looked out and he saw the army. He became so startled, he panicked. He said, you know, things don't look good at all. But how many of you know that as bad as things may get in the natural, things are not what they seem? And so Elisha was able to reassure his servant and he basically, he asked the Lord to open his eyes so that he could actually see that there was a, a bigger reality. There was an unseen reality behind the physical, behind the, 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 the trappings of the physical, behind what he was able to see and interface with. There was a bigger reality that was taking place behind the scenes. And this was a reality that says... There are more for us than against us. And I want to say that to you today. In spite of the challenges and the trials that you are facing, I want to let you know that there is an unseen reality that says there are more for us than against us. And so when Elisha's servant eyes were open and he saw this reality, his entire perspective changed. And so the tide of the battle shifted in their favor. And so today, I want to let you know that whether you see it or not, there is this reality, this unseen reality that exists beyond and behind the natural realm. It's a reality that is more superior than the realities in which we face today. It's a reality that is more superior than COVID-19 and the coronavirus. It's a reality that says things are not as they seem because they are more for us than against us. And so the first thing I want us to see from this text in 2 Kings chapter 6 is that while your, your enemy may appear to be successful against you, things are not what they seem. And I want to repeat that. While it may appear that your enemy is successful against you. Things are not what they seem. Although the enemy may appear to be gaining ground against you, although it may appear that you are being boxed in, that you're being cornered, you know, that you're being faced with, you know, trial after trial and testing after testing, I want to declare to you that things are not as they seem because there is a spiritual reality that is more real than the physical reality in which we live. In verse 14 of our text, we are told that the king of Syria sent his entire army with horses and chariots to surround uh, the house where the man of God was staying. And in the natural, it appeared that the enemy was gaining ground. It appeared that the enemy was actually being successful because they formed this entire siege around the property of the man of God. 
And so while it may have appeared in the natural that they were outnumbered and outgunned, things were not as they seemed. Because uh, one of the things that I want us to see here is that what happens in the natural is not is just half of the story. What we are seeing in the natural, what we are seeing right now with all of the crises that are going on in our world with the coronavirus and so on, that is just half of the story. That is just part of the story. But the other part of the story remains unseen. The other part of the story is happening in the realm of the spirit. And so when Elisha's servant, you know, when he saw what was happening, when he saw that the army was there, he became perplexed. He became afraid. He became so startled. In fact, we get the impression in the text that when he saw this army, that he probably wet his pants. And he muttered words to the effect, he said, well, surely we are finished now. What are we going to do? And I like Elisha's response. Elisha was very cool. He was very calm. He was very level-headed. He did not press a panic button. He didn't worry. Whereas we see in the case of the servant, you know, all he could see is what the enemy was doing. All he could see is that the enemy was doing this. The enemy was doing that. He had no vision at all of what God was doing. And so even while he was looking at what was happening in the natural, God had his hosts, you know, surrounding the enemy in the spiritual. And what I want to say to you is this, is that while we, we may become uh, afraid and concerned by what is happening in the natural, I want to declare to you that God is working behind the scenes in the spiritual, in the supernatural. God has put his, uh, his, his angelic host in camp round about those who fear him. And that is what we know from the scriptures. And so Elisha, you know, he steadied the servant. He was able to reassure him. He was able to, you know, let him know that, you know, the God that we serve, is not a God who is moved by what we see in the natural. No. The God we serve, in fact, the Bible tells us that what exists in the spiritual, in the unseen, is more real than what we see in the natural. And so the unseen realm has the ability, has the power, has the capacity to impact what we see in the natural realm. And, you know, this story of... The response of Elisha's servant reminds me of that incident when the children of Israel, you know, God had told them that he had given them the promised land. And God had told them, you can go into the promised land, it's yours. But when they went into the promised land, what did they see? They saw giants stalking the land. They saw giants stalking the land. But they, they, they instead of focusing on what God had said, the fact that God had given them this land, all they could have focused on is what the enemy was doing, that the giants were there. And sometimes the reason why we undermine ourselves, the reason why we end up in problems and difficulties is because all we are focusing on is what the enemy is doing. We magnify what the enemy is doing and we fail to observe. We fail to notice what God is doing in and through our lives. And because of of, of, of they're magnifying what the enemy was doing. Listen to what their confession was. They said, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. And indeed, in our own sight, we are like grasshoppers. Look at that pathetic uh, confession. And such a confession is really centered on, on a myopic vision that is centered only on what the enemy is doing. But what God is saying is that we have to shift our gaze. We have to shift our attention from what the enemy is doing to what God is doing. And that is why Elisha prayed for his servant so that God will open up his eyes so that he will be able to see what God was doing. And so that is my prayer for you today that, you know, God will help you to shift your gaze, shift your focus from what the enemy is doing, you know. Too many times we give life to what the enemy is doing. We talk about, you know, the enemy is doing this. The enemy is doing that. Such and such is happening. 
And then there's very little confession as to what God is doing. But God says you are more than conquerors. God says that he always causes us to triumph. We need to start confessing and start focusing on what God is doing, what God is saying, instead of magnifying and, 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 and you know, just focusing on what the enemy is doing. And so our greatest need in this hour is to expand our vision beyond what we see the enemy doing to look beyond that and see what God is doing. For God says, as he said to Habakkuk, behold, you know, that incident with Habakkuk, when Habakkuk was crying out violence, he says, you know, Lord, when will you answer? When will you hear? All Habakkuk could have talked about was what was happening, the negative. But God said to him, Habakkuk, I am about to do something very profound in your midst that if you were to be told, you wouldn't believe it. And so I want to say to you, believer, child of God, those of you who are perplexed, those of you who may be panicking about what you're seeing happening in the external environment, I want to let you know that God says, I am about to do something profound in your midst, that if it were to be told, you would not believe it. That is the God we serve. That is the God we serve. And so we have to start shifting our focus from what we see in the natural to what is happening in the supernatural, to what is happening in the spiritual, what is happening in the unseen realm. Because the things which are unseen are more real than the things which are seen. Amen? And so that's why the Lord told Habakkuk to write the vision, to make it plain. And though it tarries, wait for it because it shall speak. So what we're seeing here is that right vision in form, right vision determines right confession, and right confession determines our reality. But the interesting thing here is that not only does right vision impact right uh, uh, confession, what we are seeing is that vision has a voice of its own that determines its own reality. And so in this crisis, in this season of crisis, it is those who know how to access this vision, this vision that comes from the Lord, that will enable us to come out victorious on the other side of the crisis. Only those who are able to tap in to the vision of what God is doing will be able to come out of this crisis. Because the strength, the strength to persevere, the strength to overcome comes through the vision. And so in this season and in this hour, vision is very important. It is very important that we have access to this vision that has been released uh, from what God is doing, from what God is saying in the earth. It is time for us to shift our gaze, shift our focus from all that the enemy is doing and to start focusing on what God is doing. But the question is, where can we access this vision? How do we access this vision that is coming from above? How do we access this vision that God is currently releasing in the earth? And that takes me to my second point, which is this. When sons of God begin to arise in the knowledge of their identity, they will pray differently. When you and I, as sons of God, begin to arise in our understanding of who we are in Christ, we will begin to pray differently. In verse 17 of the text, we read, it says, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray that you will open up his eyes so that he may see. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And when we come into a correct understanding of our true identity as sons of God, we will pray differently. No longer will we pray feeble, impotent prayers. No. We will pray prayers that, are, that, are, that, are, that is full of faith, that is full of authority, that is full of confidence. We will begin to pray with the expectation that what we say will come to pass, and it will. And that is exactly what we see happening here in this text. When Elisha pray to God, his words had impact. His words actually moved the hand of God and God lifted the veil, as it were, from the eyes of his servant. 
And what I find interesting is that who did Elisha pray to? He didn't pray to apostle so-and-so. He didn't pray to prophet so-and-so. No, he prayed to the Lord himself. And the problem that we are seeing today is that in this season of crisis, too many people are looking to men and not looking to God. Too many people are going to, the, to, the, to, to, to men for answers and not going to God himself. But what I want to say to us today is that no one has any monopoly on, on truth or on sight or on vision. When we are perplexed, when we are facing these challenges and these crises, the one that we need to go to is the Lord himself. He is the one that is able to release uh, vision, that is able to release sight and insight, that is able to calibrate our understanding, that is able to give us divine direction and purpose for the journey ahead. And so what I'm saying to us today is that we need to go to God. We need to direct our prayers to God. He is the one that releases accurate sight so that we'll be able to navigate our way through all of these turbulent times that are coming on the earth. And that is exactly what Elisha did. He went straight to the source. He went straight to the source. And what we see here with Elisha is that through his spoken word, he had the ability to control who received sight and who received blindness. And I find this so powerful in the text. Through Elisha's prayer, he was able to open up the eyes of his servant and in a similar fashion, he was able to bring blindness on the enemy. And one of these things that we are seeing here is that as sons of God, we're not just going to be able to pray differently. We begin to see differently. We begin to, you know, speak dif differently. And the very word in our mouth, when we speak forth God's word, words that are full of power, words that are full of accuracy, words that are filled with sight and insight. We will actually recalibrate the hearts of the hearers. We will bring them into a better position where they are able to see and understand what God is saying, what God is doing in this season and, and in this hour. And so what I want to say to us is that as sons of God, we need to arise and begin to speak for the purposes of God. We need to release these words from God so that we'll be able to bring sight to those who are in darkness, that we'll be able to bring light to those who are, you know, groping about in darkness. And what we see here is that those who know how to pray in this season and in this hour are the ones that will receive sight. Those who don't know how to pray will continue to grope in darkness. And so what we are seeing is that the accuracy of our vision, the accuracy of our sight, our ability to see will be determined by the effectiveness of our prayers. Those who know how to pray will be able to see beyond the natural into the spiritual, into the unseen realms. But those who don't know how to pray will remain in darkness. And you know what is the terrible thing? Many people today are in darkness and they don't even know that they're in darkness. And that is a tragedy. That is a tragedy. And what we see is that this type of darkness brings deception. It brings false confidence. And that is exactly the posture and the position of the Syrian army. They were in darkness. They were in blindness and they didn't even know it. And as a result, it brought a false sense of security. It brought a false sense of confidence. And they were... When they thought that they had the upper hand, they were really being led to the slaughter. And that's why I want to say to you today that no matter how desperate things may get, things are not what they seem because there is an unseen reality that is more real than the reality in which we live. And so as we continue in this text, we see that these are uh, these soldiers these are syrian soldiers they were in deception they were really in blindness and what is so interesting about this 
is that it is possible to be in blindness and not know that you're in blindness. And we see that this blindness even extended to Elisha's servant. Yes, he could have seen physically, but he was in spiritual blindness. And did you notice how he reacted when he saw the, 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 the enemy surrounding the, the, the camp? Instead of responding in faith, he reacted in fear. And this is what blindness does. It produces doubt. It produces fear. It produces worry. It produces torment. And the unfortunate reality is that many believers are operating at that level. We are operating at the level of spiritual blindness. And so we are characterized by fear. We are characterized by worry. We are characterized by torment and stress and all of these other things. And that is, that, is, that is where the average Christian finds themselves today. Yes, there are people who love the Lord. Yes, they go to church. Yes, you know, they go through all of the motions. But they continue to be busted, disgusted, and defeated. And the reason why they continue to remain in that state is because they are controlled solely by what they see. Too many believers are controlled by what they see with their natural eyes and fail to tap in to the fact that there's an unseen realm, a realm that is more real than the physical. Too many of us are blinded to those spiritual realities. And this was the case of Elisha's servant because he only had eyes for what the enemy was doing. He only had eyes for what was happening in the natural realm. He was one-dimensional in his sight and in his vision. But instead, what he should have done was fixed his gaze on what God was doing. That would have created an internal confidence and an internal capacity that would have made him blind to the crisis that was happening in the external environment. And so he would have been able to respond in faith instead of reacting fear. Too many believers are reacting in fear. Too many believers are pressing the panic button when we don't have to. Because we are not controlled by the external, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are controlled by what happens on the internal, on the inside heart positions. This is where our confidence comes from. Because we have been calibrated by sight and insight that comes from above. The Bible says that, you know, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so we have the capacity, we have the ability to overcome everything that comes uh, against us on the outside because of who lives on the inside. And that is a, a reality that we need to grasp. We need to grasp that. We need to shift our gaze from what the enemy is doing to what God is doing. And this is what is going to give us the strength. This is what is going to give us the capacity to overcome everything that the enemy throws our way. And so I know what some of you may be saying or thinking. You may say, well, yes, it is important for us to, you know, understand that there is an unseen realm. Yes, it's important for us to look beyond the natural into the spiritual. But... You may be saying, well, I have never seen into the spirit world. I've never seen angels and demons. Does that mean that I am spiritually blinded? Well, the answer to that question is, well, not necessarily. You see, there is a deeper revelation in this text, and it's this. While it may be advantageous for us to have our spiritual eyes open like Elisha's servant, that is not the ultimate sight that we need in this hour. And I'll tell you why I say that. The text is silent as to whether or not Elisha actually see, saw into the spiritual realm. Yet, from his speech, we knew that Elisha was convinced of these unseen realities because he said to the servant, there are more for us than against us. And so Elisha was convinced that these spiritual realities existed. And so he was operating at a higher level than the servant. And that's why he prayed 
so that the Lord will open up the eyes of the servant so that he will be able to understand. And what we see here is that God will often meet us to where we are at. Elisha's servant was operating as a carnal believer. He, you know, was just depending on what he could have seen with his physical eyes. But what I like with God is that he will meet us where we are at, but he never leaves us where we are. And let me repeat that. God will often come down and meet us where we are at, but he will never leave us where we are. Instead, he will invite us to come up higher. God is inviting us even now to come up to a higher level of vision, a higher level of sight and insight. You know, God doesn't want us to stay at the carnal level where we, you know, just have to depend on, on what we see in the physical and the natural. No, God wants us to come up to a higher level. And that's why uh, when Jesus was responding to doubting Thomas, you know, after the resurrection, Thomas had made the statement. He says, unless I see the Lord with my eyes and I put my finger in his wounds, I will not believe. And Jesus rebuked him. Jesus said, Thomas, you have believed because you have seen in the natural. You have seen with your physical eyes. But blessed are those who have not seen, yet they believe. And this is a powerful concept. This is a powerful revelation. In other words, what Jesus was saying, you don't have to wait to see something in the physical to believe. You don't have to wait to see something in the physical to know that God is at work behind the scenes. If God said it, that settles it. We could take that to the bank. And that is the level of sight. That is the level of faith that God wants us to get in this season. Yes, it will be great if God uh, could open up our spiritual eyes. But God is saying, that is not the ultimate sight that I want for you in this season. What God wants is for us to open our eyes of faith so that we will see the word instead of seeing the world. God wants us to shift our gaze from the world to the word because the word is a more sure word of prophecy according to uh, 2 Peter. Peter says, you know, we have a more sure word of prophecy in the scriptures than any spiritual vision. So yes, while it may be great to have spiritual vision and, you know, to have our eyes open, you know, we applaud that and that is great. I believe the greater level of sight is when you get to the place where you just take God at his word and that settles it. And that is what I believe God wants us to get to. That is where God wants us to get to. You know, God wants us to become so fixated on his word that nothing else matters. We focus, our entire focus, our entire gaze now is on the word and not on the world. And, and God says when you are at that stage, then you are operating at the ultimate level of sight and insight. And so the final point that I want to make to us this evening is that God's instructions may seem unorthodox, but when followed, they can bring about uncommon victory. God's instructions are often unorthodox, but when followed, they bring about uncommon victories. And after Elisha had spoken with authority and, you know, he had altered the sight of these soldiers, we see that God literally flipped the script. Those that once surrounded the people of God were now surrounded by the people of God. And I sense that what God is saying to those of you who may be looking at this broadcast today is that God is saying he's about to flip the script on your enemies as we emerge from this season of quarantine. God is about to flip Flip the script on your enemies as we emerge from this season of quarantine. And those who once pursued you will be pursued. Because things are not as they seem. The God that we serve is able to turn around things. He's able to switch things around. He's able to, you know, turn the tide of the battle in an instant. 
You know, God is not constrained by what is happening in the world today. He sits outside of this world. He has the power to switch things around at a moment's notice. And many times his ways are unorthodox. Many times God, you know, we can't put God in a box. We can't say, well, you know, I expect God to do it this way or that way. No, God is not going to be confined or constrained to any mold. He's bigger than a mold. And so sometimes God will give us instructions that seem strange. But the thing is, when we follow those instructions, they bring on common results. And did you notice what happened in the text? In verse 21 of 2 Kings uh, chapter 6, it says that when the Syrian army suddenly found themselves in the camp of the Israelites, uh, Elisha, after he had called blindness on them, he led them. Uh, into the camp of the Israelites. And then he asked God to give them back their sight. And so, you know, it's like when their eyes were open, they were suddenly surrounded by the Israeli army. And I'm sure they must have panicked. And then the king of Israel, he said, man of God, shall I kill them? But the word from the Lord was, no, don't kill them. Instead, feed them. And that seemed like a strange thing to do because here it is, these were two countries they were at war and here it is you have the enemy as a sitting duck right before you and instead of taking their lives the order from the lord was feed them and oftentimes god is going to give us instructions that may seem strange even while you are you know faced with a, a desperate situation you may be faced with a situation where you're perplexed you may be in a situation where you're in a quandary. You're not sure how you're going to come out. You can't see the end of the, the, the tunnel. And sometimes it's in the midst of those situations. It's in the midst of, you know, when things are, you know, chaotic, that God gives us a seemingly strange instruction. And why does God do that? It's because things are not as they seem. So God said to, through his servant Elisha to feed the soldiers instead of killing the soldiers and look at the effect that that had it says that when they were finally released that they no longer raided the territory of israel in other words it resulted in a ceasefire it resulted in an end of all of the wars and not a life was taken and i find that to be powerful you see the Bible tells us that God is, he moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. You see, the God we serve is full of grace and mercy. He much would rather, he, he does, he's not a God who, who, who revels in destroying men's lives. No, that's why Jesus said when, you know, the disciples, they were about to pass through Samaria and the disciples wanted to call down fire because the people had reacted negatively to Jesus. And Jesus, the disciples said, Lord, shall we call down fire upon them? And Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. He said, you know, God doesn't, God, I did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save men's lives. And so when Israel heeded this instruction to feed the, the Syrian soldiers, it was the equivalent, it had the effect of literally heaping coals of fire on their heads. And that produced such a powerful conviction that it resulted in a complete turnaround that it caused a ceasefire. And that is the same thing that God is able to do with your enemies. Sometimes God is going to give you very strange instructions. My advice to you is to follow those instructions because it will result in uncommon victories. And as we conclude this evening, I want to remind you of a few things. The first thing I want to remind you is that no matter how desperate your situation may be, things are not what they seem. Things are not what they seem. They are more for us than against us. There is an unseen reality that is more real than the reality in which we live. And I also want to remind you that as a son of God, you have the capacity, you have the ability to focus on what God is doing as opposed to what the enemy is doing. 
Too many of us, we, we are narrow-minded. We are one-dimensional in our vision, in our sight. We, we only focus on the negative. And I am saying that, you know, God is saying to us that we need to shift our gaze, shift our focus from what is happening in the world to what God is saying in his word. Because the word of God is more real than what is happening in the world today. And the word of God has the power, has the capacity to transform your world and your environment. And so the final thing that I want to remind you is that we have to arise and speak forth the purposes of God. We have to speak forth the word of God. We have to ensure that the word of God is in our mouth. We need to check our confession. We need to stop speaking negatively over our lives. We need to stop describing our problems. God never called us to be commentators about the problems and the trials that we are facing. No. We are called to say what God says. And the word of the Lord, the report of the Lord is that we are more than conquerors. We are more than victorious. We are victors and not victims. And these are the words that need to be coming out of our mouths. Amen. Instead of just describing the negative and describing what the enemy is doing. No. We need to shift our focus on what God is doing. On what God is saying. That is what we need to be focused and locked in on today. Amen. And so I want to say to you that when we arise to that level of, of, of sight and accuracy, where our focus, our attention, our gaze is on the word of God, what you're going to begin to see is that the what, what, you, what you once considered to be impossible will become possible. What you will begin to see is that there will be a sudden shift There'll be a sudden turnaround in your circumstances because the God we serve is more than able. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And we, we just want to bless you today. I trust that you were really encouraged by that word. And I just want to declare to you that no matter what you may be faced with in this season, no matter what the prognosis is, I want to let you know that things are not what they seem. There is a reality, a spiritual reality that is more real than the physical reality in which we live. And that spiritual reality is able to transform our physical reality in our favor. Bless the Lord. So Father, we just thank you for each of our hearers today. And Lord, I pray that you will give encouragement to those who need to be encouraged I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen those who need to be strengthened. I pray, Lord, that you will cause your people to arise in faith. I pray, Lord, that you will cause your people to begin to take you at your word. Lord, I pray that we will not be controlled anymore by what we see in the natural, what we see in this physical realm but lord help us to be controlled by what you have said in your word because your word is more real than what we experience in the world so father I just thank you for fresh sight for fresh revelation and insight that you're bringing to your people i pray lord that you will recalibrate us recalibrate our thinking recalibrate our vision so lord we'll begin to see what you see Lord, that we will begin to function and operate as true sons of God. Father, we just thank you for all that you're going to do in and through our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Until next time, we encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, to look up, because your redemption draweth nigh. And of course, to always remember that the kingdom of God is at hand. Until next time, God bless you.